Welcome to Reno Radio. I'm your host, Naomi Finlay, Australia's renovation royalty. My podcast is all about real advice for renovating, designing beautiful spaces, tradey advice, and my weather to wonderful passion, where we interview amazing rural property owners who are turning their spaces from weather to wonderful with great design and great renos. Creating beautiful spaces doesn't have to be hard. In fact, it can be one of the most rewarding things you ever do. So join me and my impressive list of guests each week for plenty of feel-good, inspiring and real advice. This is Reno Radio. I have the pleasure of welcoming to the show today, the beautiful Beck Amos from Dunmore Farm. Welcome, Beck. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Oh, absolute pleasure. I tell you what, though, I wish we were doing this interview on the farm in that cottage because I'm sitting here now staring at the images and it is just amazing. Oh, thank you so much. Tell me a bit about it. How, you live there, right? You get to be there all the time. Yeah, so we, um, we've been living um, permanently, Angus, my husband, um, and I, we moved up from Melbourne um, just over a year ago. We've had the property just under two years. Um, yes. And we bought the property with the view to it being um, a long-term project. Um, yes. We, we wanted a project. We were ready for a project that we both could get involved in and after a few months of spending um, sort of a few weekends here and some holidays, we said, why aren't we, how do we make this a permanent thing? We loved it so much. We actually bought the property in thinking that we were going to lease out the land. Yes. And yeah, within, within a few months we went, okay, let's make it. It was, it was so rewarding on so many And it was um, from there that we decided, okay, um, what are we going to do and how are we going to make that happen? And um, we started with renovating a cottage. Um, the cottage was um, built um, circa of 1870. Wow. Um, so we were really keen to keep the old world charm that it has and um, whilst also then, you know, modernising it and um, making it as a, a beautiful um, boutique farm stay as possible. So, yeah, we spent the first year doing that and then we listed it in December last year. Um, yes. And in that time, we've also been, we've um, built, you know, spent a bit of time um, doing the farming. Well, Angus has more so than me, I have to admit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're a good woman. Restoration work and he's better in the farm. Well, no, he's not better. He's, he, he enjoys the farming a lot more than the restoration work. I have, I have <laughs> a bit of help from him, so I shouldn't say that he, <laughs> he's been involved because that's not true at all. Um, and, yeah, we've just, we've just found it incredibly rewarding um, on so many levels to have um, we feel very, very lucky to have had the opportunity to make the tree change. And in that time, I um, I have found a job. Um, so I'm doing a regional marketing role, um, which has been a wonderful way to sort of get to know people. and Connecting so with the community too. You're becoming very integrated. Yeah, so it's been, it's all just sort of followed and, and, and worked out so smoothly for us. So we, we really do pinch ourselves. And it's a incredibly beautiful area and... Um, we feel um, incredibly lucky to have found the property. We actually found the property online. Um, we, we spent our... Were you looking for a property other than just as a holiday home or were you just, were you actively looking or were you just looking at interiors porn and real estate porn? Well, we'd finished renovating our house in Melbourne and yes. I really loved that experience and we were, um, and Angus had always had in the back of his mind, he really wanted to get some land. Um, okay. And so we're like, well, why don't we buy a rural property? And we started our search. Uh, we, we, we looked all over the place, actually, in Victoria. And um, we, we started our search in sort of the Gippsland area. And yes. And we went around to more Geelong and the Otways and that, that way because Angus is um, connected down that way. Yes. And, and then we stumbled, you know, we sort of came a bit further north around Kyneton and Taradale and... Um, we missed out on a property in Taradale and then from there we thought, I've got very good friends of mine who have been in my ear for oh, probably a good 10 years. To that <laughs> Nagging at you. How about North East Victoria? 
each time I'd come and visit them, they'd say, oh, Beck, what about North East Victoria? There's a lot going on up here. There's a lot of opportunity, some beautiful properties up here. There's great rainfall. And well, um, that's important. Yeah, and that's what actually really drew us to the area. We found the property online and then when, when we looked at rainfall, it was almost twice as much as that uh, where we had previously been looking. So we, um, we found Dunmore um, and it had everything going for it apart from our, we had had a sort of two hour radius from Melbourne because we thought because it was okay. a project, we wanted to still be in sort of you know, reasonable distance um, to Melbourne. So it wasn't too far to trek out each weekend. Yeah, and I was, you know, keen to still continue working in Melbourne and um, at the time. And then when we, we realised that we sort of ticked every box, that it was a half an hour further than our kind of original. Oh, project. did you pay for Scissor Rocket? <laughs> we went, you know what? If we, if we really, if it's ticking every other box, half an hour, what's that to our, to our week? A hundred percent. So we decided, okay, this is it. So we started um, the negotiations and it took a little while. The lady who previously owned it, it was, um, she'd had the property, her and her husband had had it for, you know, a period of time and they'd had a very successful dairy farm. Yes. And, and um, unfortunately she lost her husband due to ill health um, a few years before the sale. Oh dear. So it, was a, it was very emotional for her to sell the property, but um, it was time for her because I think it was just going, it was getting beyond what she could do and manage. Um, and so we, we settled um, the negotiations in October and then we moved in just before Christmas in 2017. And wow. It's been nonstop ever since. Um, we've just been go, go, go. And um, we recently got married on the property. You know what? I'm stalking your Insta right now. And I think I see a divine photo of you and a photo of your man in a kilt. Yes, he wore a kilt. He, uh, ah! Ah! Yeah, so we um we we were looking for we've been engaged for, we had been engaged for a little while and we'd been looking at different venues and then we went you know what why don't we get our property and then in in, in the right time we'll have it on the property. Um, this is a bit fairy tale, this back. <laughs> it is. I feel. Um, I, Do you pinch yourself? <laughs> like I'm looking at the photo of you getting married. I'm listening to your story, and it's like the farm was waiting for you, and it negotiated with you about distance, and you negotiated with it with your checklist, and then it's like you, you and your your husband, and you and the home have had this gorgeous relationship ever since. Yeah, no, it's been a really, really wonderful. It's been incredibly. Um, rewarding as I mentioned earlier on so many levels and um, everything from the farming side and then you know the the cottage has been really lovely we've had amazing guests and, and really very very lucky with all the wonderful people who have come and stayed with us and um, really enjoyed the experience and I think the farm has a real a really beautiful feeling when you arrive here it's very relaxing um, we've made the cottage very comfortable and we really want to ensure people come and have a really relaxing, um, enjoyable and really comfortable stay when they do come here. Um, and it's, a, it's a, a rustic but a boutique kind of almost luxurious experience all at the same time. So tell me about, um, tell me about the renovation of the cottage because I can see that it must have been an interesting state. I was looking at the roof and the roof is original still, is it? Yes, yes. We Which is so amazing. I yeah, love that love that's it. been kept. Yeah, it is gorgeous. We loved it and we had it checked because we thought, oh, we'll just double check that it's okay. And it was, it just needed some extra nails and it's, it's been incredibly well built, the cottage. It was actually used the, um, it was built using the um, red gum on the property. Wow. And um, our builder, a friend of ours who helped us quite a lot with the work, he was really, really impressed with actually the condition of all the foundations. They were in really good condition. But That's always great when someone says you've got good bones. Yes. yes. So we were like, okay, fantastic. We, <laughs> and, it, you know, inside it was, it was fairly um, basic and, and it had a lot of um, opportunity where we could come in and, and sort of spruce it up and um, make it really lovely. And we did so what were the biggest things that you did in there? We did the cottage kitchen. Um, yes. All redone. The floors were all redone, both in the living, um, the bedrooms and other areas, living areas. Um, painting inside and out. Um, yes. Interior and exterior. Um, we did some fence building around the cottage. Um, we did the bathroom, actually. We did quite a bit of work in there, um, levelling out the floor, putting in a shower, 
we kept the original bath and the vanity um, and we I was just looking at that vanity in that bath they are stunning yeah they're beautiful we um, had them painted and that's just they're like in, in perfect condition and so it sounds like the home wasn't only well built it sounds like it was really well cared for yeah yeah there was a lot of love in the property which was really really lovely and you know what you were just saying about the the beautiful feel when you get there I don't know if you're a believer in it but I'm a massive believer that our houses you know they absorb all our stories and our experiences that people have in our in the homes and that can sometimes be the difference between a home feeling great when you get into it and when, and when you don't. It doesn't mean that if a, if a house has had, you know, uncomfortable times in it, it can't be fixed. Mm -hmm. um, but I think a lot of the time when homes have been loved and they have absorbed all that amazing energy and they have been cared for, that they, like, they seep that out as you, as you walk up to them, as you visit them. Absolutely. It's so true. It's amazing. Now, at the cottage, at the moment, you have that as a luxury cottage stay. Yeah. So where are you living on the farm? So we've got, as there's a second house on the property, which we've been um, renovating. We're nearly finishing the renovation. Um, so we sort of did the cottage and then I went, okay, our turn now. Um, and with the possible view that we may extend that into future accommodation as well. Okay. Because the, um, we've had a really great response to the cottage and often we've had, um, you know, people asking if there's more, um, you know, availability of more beds than we, we have in the cottage. So the cottage fits yep. um, up to six guests. Um, and certainly the, the house that we have um, been living in is, is a, it's more of a 1950s bungalow style. Um, so similar to what we've done with the cottage, we've put in a new kitchen, new floors, new bedroom floors, painted inside and out. Yes. Um, renovated all the put in the um cabinetry in the the laundry and um and that's that's been really lovely as well and that's sort of just nearing completion and i'm pretty excited at the thought that it will be nearly all done um and the um the very different styles but really um we've tried to sort of do similar to what we've done with the cottage is keep yes. it old world charm but sort of modernize it at the same time and so tell me about the renovating part. Have you been elbows deep or have you been more in an instructional manner? Like, do you love getting in or are you the, the you know, the style and the design and the, these are the materials and, and this is how I want it to look. What's your favourite part of it? I probably do more of the instructional um, just because of the availability of time and my skills. I'm probably better, better. better oh, I love a renovator that knows their skill best. I love it. Um, I, uh, I, I wish I was more handy with the tools, but um, we've been very lucky that we've had some really great um, people to work with and been able to sort of um, realise the vision that I've, I've had it. And certainly um, it's, it's come to life in a really beautiful way. And you know, what I love about that is that um, just because you, you know, you, you may not, I'm being presumptuous, but just because you may not be great on a jackhammer or on a, you know, on a massive drop saw, it doesn't mean that you couldn't really be part of the journey and live it and breathe it and be part of the experience. I think sometimes, you know, people are a little bit like, oh, I can't be, I can't be a renovator. I can't refurbish these, these beautiful old properties that have these stories and be part of the experience because I, I can't swing a hammer or I can't put up chip rock or whatever it might be. Like you can still be such a massive part of that gorgeous journey. Yeah, absolutely. And I've really enjoyed the sourcing of materials as well. I, I find that really um, a wonderful Oh, tell me about some of your most exciting sourcing. What was one of your, your best best finds do you think oh there's been so many actually I, I do love I love the use I love being able to find vintage pieces but also use you know combine vintage as well as new where we can yes I, I love using vintage and it's um we've got some really beautiful pieces of Angus's family um that we've been able to um utilize which was really lovely and certainly we've had um in the cottage I, I found these beautiful old chairs on eBay actually for the kitchen and um, we sourced a beautiful table from Fossil Vintage and I understand that the table's from a, um, from, they, they have a number of different places they source um, furniture from and um, 
the title, I'm trying to recall where the table was from, but it was from an old convent. Um, oh, in wow. Europe. So, um, yeah, it's been able to, you know, find different pieces and, and bring it all together and, and sort of have that kind of, you know, a, a bit eclectic, but very curated at the same time. And, you know, I think that um, one of my, I, I'm, I couldn't be more aligned with you if I tried in that I, I believe that we can combine the old and the new and, and even in ways that we've never thought of. Like I'm, I'm doing a project on a farm at, a mo at the moment and, um, you know, we're looking at putting in like a big gas lift window into sort of this shop front for them, which technically is kind of new, um, but we're using a beautiful old um, stained glass door as the window. Oh, like it, it doesn't even have to be... Um, you know, it doesn't even have to be it's what it was original, originally used for or intended for. Yeah. You know, it can just be like, wow, I want to, I want to bring more life and more love and more texture and more layers. Um, but you can use modern workmanship or modern elements um, to act to actually make it happen. So that's so exciting. Yeah, we so actually we had a couple of um, actually we had a couple of the shelves, the shelving in the kitchen and also the living room. Um, in the cottage and we've also got a shelving in our house which yes. we found in the shearing shed so we cleaned them up and um, that there were pieces left in the shearing shed that we were able to restore and utilize and that was really nice to be able to have pieces from the property as well as other absolutely yeah. absolutely there must be good energy going everywhere there yes there is absolutely and so tell me, um, I did also see on your Instagram, it's amazing what you can learn about someone by stalking their Insta. <laughs> hey, I did also see on your Insta that you're doing some suppers. Yes. I can see a gorgeous table set up in front of the most divine looking barn. You know what I love about all your photos on Insta? In, if you look at the workmanship in the buildings, you can tell that someone built them with love. Like you look at the, um, you look at sort of the fascia of that old barn and there's a lot of work in that. Oh, it's you know, the, the, it's just incredible. Yeah. It's really amazing to have that on the property because it's, it just shows you sort of, as you say, all the, the love and energy that was actually put into, you know, creating some of those structures. And it's absolutely nice those original structures as well still there and they look like they're still standing well which is great yeah, yeah they've been, they're really well made which is fantastic and so tell me a bit about this supper that I noticed yeah we've um I think when I I've always sort of been in events and and um, I've always loved the idea of when we actually saw the farm I, I did have the idea of having the opportunity to bring people together um, through sort of unique experiences and you know centered on food and and really been able to sort of have a community feel but also I think there's so much opportunity with this region to make people more aware of what's going on up here particularly you know attracting the Melbourne um, people up here because I think absolutely because it's so close yeah and we there's so much going on up here and there's so many incredible producers and winemakers and um, and Sorry, my dog and cat are just playing and they're making a lot of noise in the back. <laughs> That's okay. I'm actually, I'm sitting here having a smiling smile. I'm looking at your, your cows on your Insta and your roses and I'm looking at a photo of your puppy dog and I'm having a giggle because I can hear him panting <laughs> in the background and I can hear the birds cheep chirping and I'm like, oh my gosh, that's really a nice sound than in my office right now. It sounds divine. <laughs> very playful oh, and um, yeah so I guess when we came to um, see the property I could see a lot of potential with hosting different events here and that's sort of the long-term vision of bringing more events and, and experiences here and we started with um, the supper and um, we had our first one in June which was a winter focused um, supper and that was in collaboration with Sunday Suppers which is a, a global dinner series that was started in um, the US um, yes. 10 years ago. So we partnered um, with them for our first one, which was really um, wonderful. And we had a really um, lovely group of people. There were some Melbourne people, there were some local people, and um, a portion of the ticket proceeds actually went to the Hunger Project. So amazing. Yeah. So I guess what I've, um, from that experience, I've decided that I really want to continue doing suppers and support. Um, you know, local charities where um, and have a community aspect and sort of giving back as part of that experience. So, our next and you, 
is, sort is of a spring summer theme and um, the ticket proceeds will be going to the Wangaratta District Special School. That is just amazing, Beck. How, how um, I'm not going to say lucky because I don't believe in luck, but how um, phenomenal is it that you get to do what you love and help other people at the same time? I think it's really, it's nice to be able to give back. Did you always have this vision? What were you in Melbourne? What was the previous Beck and Angus? Um, previous Beck and Angus, I mean, I've sort of always been in the sort of creative ideas and branding and marketing space. So okay. I think we were just sort of working towards this creation. Yes. Um, just the timing for me. And I think we, um, we, you know, it just all, I think, you know, my mum always has said to me, everything happens in perfect timing and it, and it surely does. <laughs> it totally <laughs> does. It totally, totally does. Only when she said that to me, I'm like, yeah, okay, okay. But I'm quite impatient. So I'd like to think, you know, make things happen, you know, as quickly as possible. But um, sometimes patience is, you know, a good lesson. <laughs> and you know what? I wish, I sometimes wish that my children, I have four kids. I sometimes wish that they could see the wisdom our parents had. Yes. Like, and, you know, I wish that I could fast forward it for them. So instead of at 30 or 40 going, wow, mum really knew what she was talking about. Sometimes I'm like, I wish I could sprinkle that on them right now. Yes. And there might be a little bit more listening, but you're right. You know, the universe has a way of bringing it all together. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. We uh, certainly um, feel like all our vision and all our ideas are certainly being realised and, and there's a lot of potential to continue creating and, and realising what our dreams and now you mentioned that Angus was doing more of the farm work. What farm work are you starting to develop on there? So we have, um, we, we got Angus cattle, naturally. We had to get ah. Angus. Um, so we have a, a herd of <laughs> That's <cattle>. amazing. <laughs> yeah, so we've, um, we're starting, we, we've, had a, um, we've had a mix and we've got some um, cows and calves now and we're sort of starting to sort of expand our breeding program. Um, amazing yeah so we'd really like now that um you know the renovations are out of the way and <laughs> with, with angus is a bit more free he's going to spend a lot more time and sort of um you know sort of developing the pastures and then sort of spending more time on you know making we're we're, we're very lucky because our, our um our farm is very productive and we've got a lot of feed perfect on our farm, so perfect we feel very very blessed that we've got um such a beautiful property and we can you know um carry the and carry the farm cattle um and year round and, and there's certainly a lot of water so we feel very very blessed very very blessed yes. um, absolutely so, yeah. so tell me about the big dream for the farm and for the cottage and for your experience there if you closed your eyes and in 10 years you open them up in 10 years and it's a perfect world for you and angus what would it be oh wow that's like so Go on, blow your own mind. mind. Go on. I mean, we, we would love to have a really, um, really productive business, um, both from a farming perspective, but also from um, an event and also accommodation. So we'd love to expand the accommodation and really move into, I guess, creating that, from my side of um, the things, is more creating sort of retreat and unique experiences and weekends away for groups. Yes. Um, and very, you know, having that kind of very farm, um, farm to plate kind of element um, in, incorporated in and certainly bringing the farm experience as part of those um, retreats. Um, yes. I think there's, you know, I, I, I feel really um, fortunate that I'm in the role that I'm in and certainly I think we're, North East Victoria is so beautiful and there's so much to offer up here and I think there's, there's real scope to continue to um, bring people up here and, and um, have them be aware of, you know, what's on offer. There's, there's really incredible things going on up here. And I think it is, it's, it's at the start of a lot of um, opportunities where people can really get involved and certainly come and enjoy what's going on up here. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think it's, um, you know, this is a perfect example of um, what's going on in so many places around our country that I know that we all are all coastal dwellers and we love hugging the coast. Um, however, there's so much goodness is the best word I've got for it this morning. There's so much goodness that happens away from our coasts. Oh. And, um, and, it's, and it is literally uh, all the, the farms and the cottages that I stay, I talk to and that 
I get to stay at and, and the conversations I have with people just like you that, um, you know, are uncovering those hidden gems and reviving and hugging their properties that then give back to all the millions of visitors that eventually get to go there. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, um, I think your 10 year vision is very exciting, but I have a funny feeling that you probably closed your eyes and opened it in two years. Cause I don't <laughs> reckon you're going to be waiting 10. <laughs> no, I think there's definitely, um, there's, I, I, I like to move at a bit of a pace. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you like it's so funny we do believe our mums are right in that everything happens in good time but if we can make that shit faster we will yes yes <laughs> I love things <laughs> yesterday <laughs> now tell me what was your biggest renovation challenge in the cottage oh probably that time thing because you know it, you just want things to happen quick like and yeah like, me personally I'm, I'm probably someone angus is a bit more relaxed and a bit more grounded perhaps but i'm like come on let's make it you know good games a fast game but yeah it's just <laughs> <laughs> i mean having said that but you know people who have come to the property and and, and seen what we have done in a short period of time they they do think we've done a lot and and we certainly have but it's i just i mean i'd love to have as much time doing as many things as possible but i think time is a challenge and i think it's really important to be aware that it's the balance of creating and also just enjoying um, what you're doing and, and certainly um, just sort of sitting back and actually reflecting on what you have done to date and, and just to really appreciate all that as well because sometimes you can sort of go, go, go and, and wear yourselves out. A hundred percent. And I think there's also um, when you're able to renovate for love, it's actually a real, it's a very much a gift because the, the process of creation and the process of transformation is outrageously fulfilling. Mm. And so you're right. There's, there has to be that balance between hustle, hustle, hustle. And you know what? I want to sit with this and I want to find amazing pieces. And I want to, I want to chat to the home about what it wants. And, I, you know, so I totally agree there. When you, when you have the opportunity to renovate over time, instead of, yeah, it is a, it's a real balance of I need to hustle because I want to get stuff done because I'm loving this. But I guess it's also like the honeymoon period when you meet someone, Beck. You're like, right, am I going to be wasting my time? Is this going to be worthwhile? Is this the one? But at the same time, oh, my gosh, I want to love this honeymoon period because it's so exciting. <laughs> And it's just a great feeling. <laughs> it, yeah, it's just a great feeling. <laughs> that is right. And you know what? For me, I don't know about you, but renovating is just like that. The ability to transform something with your, your own mind, your own hands, the hands of people that you love or that you are part of your team. It's, it's a true gift. And I would love to see, I'm, I'm still stalking your Insta. I would love to see some before photos of the cottage. Do you have any? Yes, I do. Absolutely. And my sister actually gave us um, a, a photo album of all the photos that she took and her partner took when they first arrived at the property two years ago, um, just recently. And so it was really nice to look back on that and go, wow, what, what a difference. What, what wow, a look at what we've done. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I can send um, some of those photos to you. For sure. I would love to love to see them. And, and because I think, you know, there's often when people look at a gorgeous cottage like this one, they're like, oh, yeah, well, you know, it's, it's really, really, really beautiful. I'm, and, and they don't understand where you took it from. Yeah. Um, so that's why I'd love, I'd love to be able to share some before photos as well so they can see the true journey that you took this beauty on. Yeah, no, absolutely. I'd be very happy to. Oh, amazing. Thank you so much for talking to me today, Beck. Thank you so much for your time. Now, nice. tell me, for all the listeners listening, what I want you to, if you're open to sharing, what was your biggest concern or limiting belief or fear when you were looking to take on this project and how did you overcome it? Oh, I remember actually the day that we settled and we moved in. Yeah. I remember Angus and I looking at each other going, holy moly, what have <laughs> we done? Like, what have we done? What were we thinking? Yeah. And then I was like, no, 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 this is like so good. This is so good. We can, we can make this work. But that moment of overwhelming, holy dooly, like we've, we've taken on a massive task here. Massive. And so 
what was the thing that, that you think got you over that hump? Was it that you were together? Yeah, definitely. Like having having us both, um, I guess we we feel so committed and we, we both, we work really well as a team. Um, and, you know, I'm, we balance each other out, certainly. Angus is very good at sort of slowing me down and making me <laughs> have a little check of reality. Um, but I, th- I think it's, you know, you can... I do believe you can do anything you truly want to. And if you really want to create and you really want to do something, you can do it. There's help out there. There's people who will give you advice. There's people who will give, you know, people want to help each other. And They do. You know what? They really do. And if you really, if that's what you really want to do and you really want to create, it happens. It just absolutely happens. The universe delivers, I find, to people that have the passion, are willing to take risks and are willing to take action. You're right. The universe delivers and we do have phenomenal people all around us generally that when you ask, they will help. Yeah. And if you're really clear with what you want to do, it just happens. It really, I do believe that. I think it's, um, there's a, a, you've got the, the determination, and you've got the willingness and you're prepared to do the work, it will happen. I love it. I love it. That is a perfect spot to finish up today. I'm very excited. And can you, um, for anyone who is wanting to know more about Dunmore Farm, wanting to see your beautiful renovation, wanting to come and stay, um, get to see Angus in a kilt if they're lucky, um, how can they find out more about you? Um, Certainly go to our website, which is Dunmore Farm, um, www.dunmorefarm.com.au or follow us on Instagram. Um, which is the cottage um, at Dunmore, which is um, Dunmore Farm as well. Um, or feel free to give me a buzz. My number's on the, the website and I'm really happy to have a chat with people or um, if people want to have events here, really open to ideas and, and collaborations. Fantastic. Thanks again, Beck. And I look forward to getting you back on the um, back on the show when you've renovated more buildings and you're running retreats there in around 18 months. <laughs> Not 10 years. <laughs> Thank you so much, Naomi. Pleasure, Beck. Bye. Thanks for joining me today, guys, on Reno Radio. It has been a blast. I would love it if you subscribed so you never missed a beat of this podcast. And naturally, let me know what you think. I love to hear everyone's feedback and reviews. If you'd like to know more about all the services and content that we produce at naomifinlay.com, then head on over to naomifinlay.com. You can also keep an eye on what I'm up to on my Instagram. You can find me there at naomifinlayofficial. Until next time, team, enjoy. Enjoy.